here with me now to chew it all over. Eddie Redmayne, best actor, deserved? Absolutely deserved. It was an incredible transformation for Eddie Redmayne. And I think from the start, I, th I think the theory of everything was always going to be a front runner. You know, award season, they always like a biopic. They like a good transformation. They like someone that's really yeah, done something always. very different. Yeah. And what a labour of love it's that's been here for Eddie Redmayne. He's truly well pulled it out of the bag. And the two Golden Globe Best Actor winners the previous two years, and mm. Matthew McConaughey, uh, and Daniel Day-Lewis have gone on to win the Oscar as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I think the Golden Globes are a great precursor for what could happen at the Oscars. Um, it's a great uh, start to the award seasons, really. It's all the glitz and glamour that we're looking forward to. And if he tips the top prize as well, then we can only hope for Vesta British. But if we don't get him, it could be Benedict Cumberbatch as well, or David Oyelowo yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So. There's a great array of British talent out there. And even though they're nominated and don't necessarily win, you know, I think we've got such a strong uh, amount of talent going over to the US on both film and TV at the moment. Um, Kira Knightley was nominated as well, Felicity Jones for The Theory of Everything. And I think it, you know, it can only get stronger and stronger. Quick mention of TV there, Joanne Froggart got mm. Best Supporting Actress in a series for Downton Abbey. Surely it's not long before she's, well, in more movies, right? Well, yeah, absolutely. But also, you know, she might take the tact of wanting to stay in TV. Downton Abbey has done so well across the pond that why not stay with something that's doing really, really well at the moment? Another British star, Ruth Wilson, she got best performance by an actress in a TV series, In the Affair. Um, not entirely familiar with this. I'm not entirely familiar with her. Um, again, is she just one to sort of bubbling under? Well, she got nominated a few years ago, um, and so this is the second time around for her. She's a very accomplished actress. I think it's, again, it's something that's taking over from things like Homeland. You know, my bet was going to be on Claire Danes to pick up uh, yes. the actress gone for this, but she pipped her to the post, and all power to her. I you think. know, I do recognise her face. <laughs> now I've seen her. Now look, the awful, awful lot of speeches, of course. Mm. George Clooney, though, paid tribute uh, to his new wife, Amal. Let me know what you think. Here's a look. It's a humbling thing when you find uh, someone to love. Even better if you've been waiting your whole life. <laughs> and when your whole life is 53 years, you know, cue Amy, start the jokes. Um, Amal, whatever alchemy it is that brought us together, I, I couldn't be more proud to be your husband. Hard to tell what she thought about that. I'm sure she was She's very, very happy. reserved, though. But it, I mean, that, he was getting a lifetime achievement award mm. there. We're not used to seeing him giving those public displays of affection, are yeah. we? Really? I think it actually really hits him throughout the whole speech. He's very humble throughout it, and he's you know trying to pick out those light moments of joking with his colleagues just to maybe mm. save himself from you know cracking up a little bit and having a bit of a tear because it did look like he was on the verge of that. But it's lovely, you know. He is in the public eye all the time with his relationship with Amal, and I think it's a really nice sort of, you know, thing to give to her as well. Rebecca, thanks very much indeed. Quick mention, big winner of the night was Boyhood, the film filmed over 12 years, and also the Grand Budapest Hotel did very well, which we were talking about last week, weren't we, for the BAFTAs and the Oscars.